continue the lecture on uh, absolute luminosity, we will talk about the Stefan Boltzmann law now. The Stefan Boltzmann law connects the luminosity of a star to how big it is, which is its radius, and its temperature, right? So the radius is a measure of what its size is, right? Well, this law pretty much comes from this concept. The bigger the surface area of the star, the more surface area it will have, right? And uh, if a star is small, it has a small surface area, right? So it kind of makes sense that the bigger the star is, the brighter it will be because it will simply just have more surface area. What is the equation for the surface area of a star? A is equal to 4 pi r squared. This is the surface area of any sphere, right? 4 pi r squared. So basically we can say the surface area of a sphere is proportional to its radius squared. That's where this law comes from, okay? The bigger the radius and you square it, that gives you the surface area. Now each square area of the star, right? Each square area of the star will radiate. How much will it radiate? Well, that has to do with the, um, uh, the equation for radiation. Power radiated from an object is proportional to its temperature to the power of four. In order for this equation to work, the temperature has to be in degrees Kelvin, right? So if something is at completely absolute zero, it will not radiate anything. The hotter and hotter and hotter it is, the more it will radiate proportional to its temperature to the power of four. So the temperature has to be in Kelvin, okay? So that's where this law comes from. So each unit area of the star is radiating proportional to its temperature to the power of four, and since the star has a certain surface area, you multiply that by the surface area of the star, okay? So let's come to the HR diagram again. We saw in the last lecture that the luminosity of the sun is defined as one, and its temperature is 5800 Kelvin. Let's now define the temperature of the sun, the 5800 Kelvin, as one, okay? We'll say that's the temperature of the sun, and we'll call it one. So we'll change this to one here. Okay, so then we also saw that there are horizontal lines that go this way, and those are the size of the stars, right? So the size of our sun happens to be, we'll also define that as one, the size of the sun, and the radius of the sun we'll call one. So there'll be a slanted line like this that goes through this point. Okay, and we'll call that the radius of the star one uh, is equal to one, okay? Okay, so let's say there is a star that has the same radius of the sun, but it is 10 times um, hotter, okay? So R is equal to one, but the temperature is 10 times hotter, okay? So what is that going to be if it's 10 times hotter? Remember the temperature of the sun is 5,800 Kelvin, 10 times hotter, well, that's a lot actually. Uh, that's uh, 5,800 Kelvin times 10, that's 58,000 Kelvin. So that's a very, very, very hot star. That brings us to the left corner right here. So what would its luminosity be? It'll be one squared times, t, uh, times uh, 10 to the power of four, and that'll be 10,000, right? So if it's 10 times hotter, but the same size, it's 10,000. So where should we put it? So we should put it at the most left here. So let's say this is 10, 10 times hotter. And uh, 10,000, that brings you here, right there. So the star would lie over there on the HR diagram. Is that star a typical star? No, not really. Because usually stars that are 10 times hotter are also bigger. So the main sequence runs something like this. It runs something like, you know, it goes way up there, then it comes down, then it goes like this, okay? So th that's not a usual star that exists in nature, 10 times hotter and the same size, okay? What if it is 10 times hotter and 10 times the size? What would that be, okay? 10 times other, 10 times the size. So then you would take here 10 squared 
and then 10 to the fourth. Okay, that's more doable. Now the luminosity becomes 10 to the sixth, which is a million, right? And so that brings us to this corner. And that's about, about roughly the brightest star that you could have. So it brings us to the top left corner of the HR diagram, right here. Now we can start making variations of this. We can say, well, what if you have a star that's the same temperature as the sun, but 10 times the size, okay? Oh, by the way, uh, going back, we now have to make a slanted line here, like this. Any star that's on that line is 10 times bigger, right? 10 times bigger. So we'll say radius is equal to 10. So what if there is a star that is 10 times bigger, but it is the same temperature, okay? Could that happen? Yeah, that could happen. So luminosity is equal to 10 squared times one to the fourth, that's 100. So basically that would be the same temperature. You go up, you go up, you go up, you see the 100? The, you go across 100 and over here, and then this line, r equals 10, must intersect through that. You go, you go like this. And that star would go right here. It would be the same temperature as the sun, and then you would go across, it would be 100 times brighter. Okay, does that star exist? Possibly it exists as a main sequence star. Maybe it exists as a red giant star. So maybe uh, the, the star has started evolving and moving off the main sequence, right? And so if it's evolving, going off the main sequence, it could be about the same temperature, but it's now grown 10 times. So it might exist as a main sequence or as a, a giant star, okay? So we can now make any kind of combination that we want. How about if we make it five times hotter, okay? And we make it, um, uh, we make it five times hotter and ten times bigger, okay? So we say the radius is ten times bigger, the luminosity is five times hotter, okay? So then you have luminosity is equal to uh, ten squared times five to the power four. Well, uh, ten squared is a hundred. Five to the power four is basically what? Well, that's five squared times five squared which is 25 times 25. 25 times 25 and 500. So where would that be? Well, uh, it'll be a, a more than 10,000, but less than 100,000. So basically, you bring, you go up, you go up, you go up, more than 10,000. So it brings you roughly about here. The intersection, yeah, right there. So less than 10,000, so uh, more than 10,000, less than 100,000. So it brings you this star right here. And that star is a very likely star. It's a, it's a star that is uh, bigger and it is um, bigger than the sun. And well, here I should have put the temperature is five. It is a star that is bigger than the sun by 10 times. And the temperature is five times hotter than the sun. Since the temperature of the sun is 5,800 Kelvin, five times 5,800, roughly about, uh, that would be 29,000. 29,000 Kelvin would be its actual temperature, and it would be five times hotter than the sun. So we could keep doing this. Now, what if we uh, look on this side? Are there stars here? And we see in stellar evolution, this uh, area is pretty populated. There are giants. There are, uh, the, down here, there are subgiants. Over here, there are giants. Over here, there are super giants. Okay? So that area is populated with stars. Those are the stars that are dying and that have grown. They've cooled down, but they are much bigger. So let's give an example of one of those. Let's say you have a star that is less than the luminosity of the sun, so 2,500 Kelvin, that's about half of the temperature of the sun. So let's call that a half 
0.5. So let's say what if you had a star that's temperature was 0.5 and then its uh, radius, this time we can make it super, super large, thousand times the radius of the sun, okay? So the luminosity would be equal to what? So thousand squared times 0.5 to the power four, okay? So if you square the thousand, the hundred. So where does that take us? So if you uh, put the, let's erase these words here. Okay. Well, 62,000, that brings us similar to what this was right here. It goes across, it goes across, it goes across. And then the 0.5 goes across, goes across, goes across. Okay, so that's about the coldest, we said. It goes up there, 62,000 goes over here. The star belongs here. Therefore, now I draw a slanted line and I say any star that's a thousand times the size of the sun and it would intersect right there at half 62,000, okay? Those would be called super giants. So then this would be one, uh, 10 times the size of the sun this would be one times the size of the sun. Now we, we need uh, between here, between 10 and 1,000, one that is uh, 100, right? And then we can go down to over here, like this and like this, okay? Now, even bigger than that could be 10,000. So if you go 10,000 and you square it, what are you gonna get? Well. Uh, we basically added one more zero here. When you square it, you add two more zeros here. One zero, one zero. So where does that bring you? Uh, that brings you 6,250,000. Okay, well, that's pretty much over that limit, right? So maybe we can make this a little bit colder. Uh, so it'll be kind of like a little bit colder. And so we'll just basically be at the tip end of the uh, HR diagram, 10,000 uh, 10, times bigger, way at the tip end, and those would be the biggest possible stars. On the other hand, these ones here, they would be one uh, tenth the size of the sun, one hundredth the size of the sun, and one thousandth the size of the sun, and then one ten thousandth the size of the sun. Let's give an example of a small star, okay? Uh, white dwarf stars are what our sun is going to end up as one day, okay? Roughly, white dwarf stars are about one hundredth the size of the sun, okay? So the radius is uh, going to be one hundredth the size of the sun, typical white dwarf, and the temperature is going to be about twice the size of the, um, about twice as hot as the sun. Again, this is just typical. So that's going to make, bring it somewhere about over here. Twice as hot, maybe three times as hot. So what are their luminosities going to be? So if you put here uh, 100 and then you square it, and then you go two to the power four, so that's uh, basically two to the power four is 16. 100 squared is 10 to the power minus four. 10 to the power minus four. Okay, because you have two zeros and then you're, it is on the bottom, right? You're squaring them. So what is that? Well, this would be, go back one space, 1 1.6 times 10 to the minus three. Okay, so it's about 1,000th the luminosity of the sun. So where does that go? Okay, so you go up and then this one is 1 10th. So let's actually correct this. So uh, let's make it exact. So uh, if it's two times hotter, it's going to be 10 to the minus three is right here. So it goes like this, like this. Through that, I should have something that's 100 the size of the sun. So this 100th line, okay, should go through that point. So something looking like this, okay, 100th. And therefore, the one-tenth should look something like this. One-tenth the size of the sun, and then one-thousandth and one-ten-thousandth, right? 
So that will give you a, the approximate luminosity of a white dwarf. So the white dwarfs will lie about uh, this area. Some of them maybe are hotter and uh, brighter, but their size is about the same as the size of the Earth, which is 100 the size of the Sun. So now you can see how to use the Stefan Boltzmann law, how um, general it is. It applies for all stars, whether it is mean sequence or they are dying stars or they are dead stars, and how useful it is in being able to analyze the stars on the HR diagram and to plot them on the HR diagram. Okay? Thank you very much.